Hello and welcome to Bloke on the Range. Now I've got here in front of me a British Patton 14 rifle, the uh, emergency reserve arm made in America in the First World War, later famously used by the Home Guard in the second mostly, and a representative Mauser 98. Now uh, if you're watching the channel you're probably already aware that uh, the P14 is based on the Mauser 98 and I thought we'd take a little look at the differences, uh, but not just the uh, the big differences like uh, the hardware, the sights, uh, and so on, but really dig into the fine detail of what they did in the receiver from one to the other. Now, I know this is a Second World War era rifle, but frankly, fundamentally, there's nothing here that isn't either in a Car 98A or a Gewehr 98. I mean, if effectively, the Car 98K is um, more or less a Car 98A with the front end of a Gewehr 98. So we've still got a tangent uh, V-notch and barleycorn front sight. The receiver is basically identical and uh, yep, so there's basically nothing, no different. It's completely valid to compare the two because basically the action changed not at all. Right, so uh, Let's just quickly go through the very obvious things. Sights, British style, protected, German uh, barley corn, so V, uh, inverted V. We end up with an L-type flip rear sight, adjustable for elevation. Battle sight fixed at 400 yards. Here the top of the receiver is plain because the rear sights are there. The stock shape is different, fine. So, let us move to the actual interesting bits. So if we go over to the left side of the receiver here, they're clearly very, very similar. They've got uh, more or less the same uh, bolt stop and ejector assembly in each case. The P14 one is a little longer because uh, it would originally have had so-called volley sights, so a folding aperture sight here, and uh, this uses this spring to provide uh, some retaining force here, whereas on the, uh, on the Mauser 98, the spring is internal. Uh, obvious change here is that, so we've got a massive great thumb cut out here, and we don't on the P14. Now, uh, P14 is effectively a Mauser 98 type rifle with a few things taken over from a 1903 Springfield and uh, with a few British prejudices added to it. So here we've got a tiny, tiny little thumb cutout that, that hardly does anything at all and that's more similar to the 1903 Springfield. With the Mauser you can get your thumb right in there when you're stripping rounds out, out the stripper clip whereas with the P14 you can hang yourself up on that. Ask me how I know. So the magazine system floor plate with a flat spring, it's basically the same between the two. This one's just been tweaked to work with the uh, rimmed 303 ammunition and frankly it doesn't work as well as this one does with rimless. Uh, the charger guides are, have only been changed in so far as they need to be to work with the respective clips. They will both clear a stripper clip automatically. Now this one's had its automatic bolt hold open uh, ground off so that you can close the bolt on it. This one is still fully functional. You'll find these in both states because some people seem to have ground them off. Whether it's done officially or not, I don't know. From a barrel and stocking up perspective, Mauser 98 has a stepped barrel that, uh, depending on, uh, on the area it was made, is either in full contact or there's a certain amount of clearance, but it's fairly tight in there, whereas uh, P14 is pressure bedded like the later number four, but it, it uh, exerts a down pressure on the muzzle to control vibrations and the barrel's got a much simpler taper. So if you look to the safety catches, we've got a, a major difference here. We've got a classic Mauser three position flag type safety on the cocking piece at the back. It's kind of stiff on this rifle. That's the disassembly position. That's safe, locks the bolt, can only be applied with the bolt closed. This one, you can cycle the bolt, but it's not used when carrying the rifle. It's really just uh, to enable you to strip the bolt, and then that is fire. And on the P14, we have a thumb lever here, two position, 
which is probably the best safety catch on any military bolt action rifle ever, falls conveniently under the thumb and in typical British fashion, this one is also stiff, typical British fashion it can be applied with the rifle decocked as well to lock the bolt because it was quite common to uh, carry a rifle with uh, um, no round in the chamber or even completely empty and then lock the bolt. Now another commonly noted difference is that a Mauser 98 is cock on, cock on opening. You see that the, uh, um, the cocking piece comes all the way back when you open it, whereas with a P14 it's cock on closing. So uh, this one isn't mine so I will not dry fire it. So when you withdraw the bolt it only comes back a little bit to withdraw the firing pin away from, uh, from the primer so that it doesn't get uh, stuck in there and then it's only when you push it forward does it actually get left behind on on the on the bent in there that interacts with the sear um, and the reason for this is that there's a massive prejudice in favor of accurate rapid fire in the British Army of this period and uh, I personally agree that it is quicker if it cocks on closing all else being easier because you're not working against the striker spring to anywhere near the same degree. It needs less force to open the bolt. Now another important ergonomic improvement that was made here is uh, this dog leg here in the bolt handle which puts the uh, bolt knob pretty much level with the back of the uh, of the trigger guard whereas with the Mauser 98 it's in front so when you fire this you have to bring your hand forward to grab the bolt, whereas here, let me just decock it again because it's not mine, it's right there. Bang! You can even flick it up with your finger, it's, uh, it's so well positioned. And this is, this is a bit of ergonomics taken over from the SMLE, they just copied the, uh, the bolt handle position on the SMLE. Okay, getting really down into details of, uh, of the bolts now. Uh, the primary extraction is arranged completely differently. Here it's just the stem of the bolt handle that hits a, a cam on the receiver. Whereas here, we've got it copied from the 1903 Springfield. We have a cam on the bolt handle instead of on the receiver. And then in there, there's a little lug with an oblique face on it and uh, the cam on the bolt hits on that, brings the, uh, the bolt back just a touch to do primary extraction, just to shake a slightly sticky case loose. And in fact, while we've got this up here, we can have a look at how the safety functions. And as you operate the safety, there's a little uh, nub there that rises up into a corresponding notch in the cocking piece and there's also a hole in the back of the bolt handle and we've got a little plunger there that comes in and out and that's what holds the, uh, the bolt closed when it is applied. On the Mauser the safety uh, uh, it just cams the cocking piece back a little. Now having gone and got a couple of cartridges, actually the controlled feed is improved by having this uh, smaller extractor because the rim of the round can slip up underneath it, it has less work to do, it's actually got better geometry, um, whereas this one it needs a bit of a push and sometimes it jumps out on this, sometimes it'll just click in nicely, other times it will uh, it will jump out as it comes out the magazine, which I've not seen with the P14. Now one consequence of this is that the unload drill for each rifle is ever so slightly different. And uh, I've seen the pamphlets in both. With the P14, you can unload it just like an SMLE. You don't have to push the bolt all the way closed. To unload, push forward the safety catch. Work the bolt continuously backwards and forwards until all rounds are ejected. Close the bolt. A P14 
press your trigger and apply the safety catch. Whereas in the Mauser manual, what they want you to do is uh, not close the bolt fully because that puts the rifle in a state to fire, um, but they want you to push the bolt all the way forward like this to ensure that that extractor clips on even if um, a round jumps the feed. So as an example of pushing it to about here like I did with the P14 and I know I didn't push one far enough I was testing the limits. See you go, there you go, jumped. it jumped the control feed. Ooh, and then we have a, a jam. <laughs> so there you go, uh, an extremely geeky look at the mechanical differences between a Mauser 98 action and a P14. So I hope you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe, please if you haven't already supported us on Patreon please consider doing so, there'll be a link that pops up at the end, there's a link in the description below. And many many thanks to Kudu Shooting Centre in Sion, uh, Canton Valley in Switzerland for the use of their awesome range, uh, their website is also linked in the description below. Bye!